A bombshell from the U.S. Attorney's Office about a rogue prosecutor. Learn what the black eye now means for Jim Letton's office and his future. Also, New Orleans Mayor Mitch Landrieu meets with President Obama. We'll tell you what the two discussed today. Plus, a shooting tonight leaves a man dead. Details on the Crescent City's latest murder. The News at 10 starts now. This is WDSU News at 10. For me to start expressing personal opinions about my depth of, of, of disappointment uh, is, is a dangerous place to go. U.S. Attorney Jim Letton holds back his frustration after learning one of his own. Assistant U.S. Attorney Sal Perricone has been violating the trust of Letton's office. Perricone sits at one of the highest levels of the U.S. criminal justice system and is accused of posting negative comments online about ongoing investigations. We have team coverage tonight. First, experts weigh in on if the public perception of Jim Letton's office will now change. Also, Letton responds to questions about whether this news will affect his future in New Orleans. And we'll show you more of the online comments Perricone directed at public officials, including his boss. But we begin with I-Team reporter Travers Mackle. He breaks down what Perricone did wrong. Veteran federal prosecutor Sal Perricone ran rogue attacks for years on the NOLA.com website, repeatedly calling out criminal suspects and elected leaders he was investigating. You know, this is not a happy thing for me. Perricone's online handle Henry L. Mankin, 1951. Earlier this week, the 60-year-old came clean to his boss about his online alter ego. Sal Perricone readily acknowledged that he, in fact, was Henry L. Mankin, 1951. The U.S. Attorney Jim Letton learned of Perricone's actions after Fred Hebe, the owner of River Birch Landfill and the target of a federal investigation, filed this petition in civil court accusing Perricone of penning defamatory comments about him and others, hundreds of them. He be used a former FBI forensic linguist to help him out Perricone. It's a story the I-team broke on Tuesday. Perricone has been recused from any cases he's working and the Department of Justice has been called in to investigate. What we want more than anything is to keep the trust of the citizens. A former NOPD officer, Perricone handled dozens of high profile cases including the prosecutions of Jim Brown, Mose Jefferson, and the Canal Street brothel. He commented on just about every case Letton's office worked. It is certainly our hope that, uh, that none of our, uh, of our cases, our achievements, will be adversely affected by this. But some legal analysts say that may be wishful thinking. They say Paracone's comments may constitute leaking secret grand jury information and possibly tainting the jury pool. They say expect defense lawyers to file a slew of appeals over the next few weeks. Whether it's misprison, whether it's obstruction of justice, leaking that information before it was a public record is, is, is a violation of the law. And Paracone could soon face more sanctions from the DOJ. Letton would not say what Paracone's motivation was, but even after admitting guilt, he kept it up, posting this response Wednesday morning. I'm not going to share my personal reaction to that. But Letton so, does want to make sure the public doesn't have a reaction to this incident. This is something that I feel we have to make right. On your side, I'm Travers Mackle, WDSU News. So what does this black eye mean for the public perception of the U.S. Attorney's Office? WDSU reporter Simney Chewin asked the experts and picks up our team coverage live here in the studio. Simney. Scott, this scandal has serious ramifications for the U.S. Attorney's Office as it prides itself on setting the standard for ethical behavior. The question now, with the NOPD in the process of reform, how will this affect the federal consent decree? A setback for the once pristine office of U.S. Attorney Jim Letton. One of the things his office has really kind of stood for, especially post-Katrina, has been trying to be a bulwark for the community against some of the corruption. It was really endemic to city government for a very long time. The integrity of the office is now in question since top prosecutor Sal Perricone admitted to posting comments on NOLA.com about several ongoing federal cases. Perricone is also a key player in negotiating the federal consent decree with the long-troubled NOPD. It's a critical role Tracy Washington of the Louisiana Justice Institute argues has now been compromised. 
that undermines really the credibility of the process and you need buy-in. You need buy-in from the police and you need buy-in from the community and no one's going to buy into a process where this guy has been placed in charge. Raymond Burkhart, spokesman for the Fraternal Order of Police, agrees and says it's particularly problematic with low morale in the NOPD. There is a bit of a taint on that negotiation process for the rank and file because how can we trust what you're telling us is true if later on you go and talk about us behind our backs and maybe not are negotiating in good faith. While the investigation continues into who knew what in Letton's office, some are calling for Letton's job as all of this happened under his watch. So again, I don't absolve Jim Letton from responsibility here. And in, in my assessment, they need to clean house as well as NOPD. Tulane Law Professor Pamela Metzger says it is premature to speculate about whether Letton's position is in jeopardy. However, she adds it is imperative the office come clean about all of its knowledge of Perricone's secret identity. Scott. Simony, thanks. An NOPD spokesperson also confirms that Perricone taught a class two weeks ago to NOPD supervisors dealing with the court system. Jim Letton is one of only two Republican appointed United States attorneys in the U.S. When Barack Obama was elected president, Letton was retained with bipartisan support in the area. We asked him if this controversy could cost him his job. I hope that the president and the attorney general uh, and most of all the people find me worthy of service, of public service. Um, the best thing I can do is, again, you know, we don't always, we don't, we don't, we don't deal these cards. Sometimes we just got to play them. And uh, I think we run a pretty tight ship here. Letton said he was unaware of Perricone's actions until the prosecutor confessed Tuesday morning. Here's a look at some of the hundreds of Sal Perricone's comments from NOLA.com. He goes after politicians, including Mayor Mitch Landrieu. Please, please stop the vapid, inane news conferences. Then, on an article titled Mark St. Pierre to be sentenced to 2 p.m. on corruption charges, Perricone comments another Letton news conference. Orleans Parish District Attorney Leon Canazero targeted as well. Perricone says, I'm beginning to believe you either have to be very dumb or crazy to be the DA of Orleans Parish. He goes on to say, Leon, are you nuts? Do you need a title that bad? And commenting on an article about the federal consent decree changing the culture of the NOPD, Perricone says about Chief Ronald Surpass, left to his own devices, the NOPD under his control will backslide into the morass it has become over the past 20 years. An update now on a police shooting that left an unarmed man dead. Joshua Kokla, the officer who killed 20-year-old Wendell Allen, gave a voluntary statement today to the Public Integrity Bureau and homicide detectives about why he pulled the trigger. The independent police monitor also witnessed Kokla's statement, but because the investigation is ongoing, details about what he said were not released. Also today, local Since, clergy uh, called on the, the NOPD, the district attorney, and the FBI to conduct a fair and transparent the investigation IRA into the, the shootings that left Allen and Justin Sipp dead. The ministers united for progress say there is growing concern over the lack of answers for the shootings. New tonight at 10, a 44-year-old man is dead after a shooting in Holly Grove. Police say he was shot several times just before 8 tonight in the 3,000 block of General Ogden. Call Crime Stoppers at 822-1111 if you have any further information on this murder. New at 10 from St. Bernard Parish, a man is behind bars for shooting at sheriff's deputies who were checking on why his 12-year-old son wasn't going to school. Deputies say 52-year-old John Kane fired four shots at them and they returned fire. No one was hit through it all. Kane eventually surrendered and his son, who was living in a shed without electricity, will now live with another relative. The New Orleans City Council is taking up a new measure to crack down on noise in the French Quarter. Council member Kristen Palmer proposed an ordinance that would require the speakers at bars and nightclubs to remain inside the buildings and 10 feet away from open doors or windows. This comes after several French Quarter neighbors complained about noise late at night. An acoustics expert brought in to evaluate the noise levels says noise could have an adverse impact on residents' health. It's generally considered a stressor, so it causes increases in blood pressure and all the health problems that go along with that. So it's not just simply saying, ah, they're just annoyed a little bit. It is actually a, a bad health effect on people who live in these areas with the high sound levels. The council is expected to take up the ordinance at its meeting on April 5th. From Baton Rouge, part of Governor Bobby Jindal's education reform package gained some momentum. Both House and Senate education committees voted to expand a taxpayer-funded voucher program that allows low-income families to send 
send children to private schools. The vouchers already exist in New Orleans, but would expand statewide. Both committees also voted to increase charter schools and cut tenure protection laws for tens of thousands of Louisiana teachers. New Orleans Mayor Mitch Landrieu spent Thursday in Washington meeting with President Obama. Landrieu is part of a new White House Council on Strong Cities and Strong Communities. The council will help bridge the gap between federal agencies and America's urban communities. Uh, the president was kind enough to uh, address us. Each one of these mayors standing behind us has picked uh, a number of different subject matter areas to use as examples of how uh, their cities can work uh, much better in partnership with the federal government uh, and making sure that we actually solve problems quicker and return a greater value uh, to the taxpayers of America. Topics discussed between the mayors and the president included transportation, health care, the economy, and crime. Still to come tonight, more than 200 young Special Olympians competed, competed today on the North Shore. How these athletes have been training for Thursday's challenge all year. Also, a Republican presidential candidate stops in our area tomorrow. Who's visiting and how the city he will visit is preparing. That's in tonight's Commitment 2012 report. And more dense fog in the morning, but there is rain in sight. I'll let you know when in my exact cast.